<laughs> Good evening, long time no scare. <laughs> it's my most favorite time of fear, Halloween. But I'm staying calm because nothing gets under my skin. While we wait to go trick-or-treating and get some candy, here's a nice gory story. So plump up your coffin pillows and sit back for another terror tale. I call this one, The Writing on the Wall. When I was younger, there was a rundown building at the bottom of our street. All the kids in the area kept away from it because the rumor was it was haunted. The concrete walls in the old two-story building were cracked and crumbling. The windows were broken and shards of glass lay all over the floor on the inside. One evening as a test of courage, my best friend and I decided to explore the creepy old place. We climbed through a window in the back of the building. The whole place was dirty and there was a layer of mud on the wooden floor. As we dusted ourselves off, we looked up and we were shocked to see that someone had written the words, I am dead, on the wall near the ceiling. We explored more of the rooms on the ground floor. In a room that appeared to have once been a kitchen of sorts, we found some more writing on the walls. It read, I am in a room upstairs. We walked up the creaking stairs to the second floor. I led the way and my friend followed close behind. I wasn't scared, but he was beginning to get a little jittery. When we came to the top of the stairs, we turned left and walked cautiously down a narrow hallway. At the end of the hallway was a closed door with some more ominous writing on it. You will find me in this room. By now my friend was shaking in fear. I was quite creeped out too, but I didn't want to show it. He told me he didn't want to go any further, but I insisted telling him nothing to be afraid of. I turned the handle on the door and opened it. We stepped in the room and found it was empty. There were two closed doors on either side. There was more creepy writing on the wall. My head is on the left and my body is on the right. As soon as my friend saw this, he completely lost his nerve. He gave out a scream, turned, and ran away. I caught a hold of his arm, but he shook me off and fled out through the open door. I heard his footsteps disappearing down the hallway. I held my ground. I was determined to be brave and overcome my fear. Mustering all the courage I had, I opened the door on the right and walked inside. I walked to the other side of the room, and on that wall were written in tiny letters the words, My body is underneath. I looked down at the floor. I was standing on more writing on the floorboards. I stepped back and saw the words. My head is coming from the room behind you. Turn around. I heard the door behind me creaking and quickly I turned. There was a shadow moving behind the door. Suddenly something came into the room and came to rest against the wall. It was my friend's severed head. His dead sightless eyes seemed to stare at me. Screaming in horror I flung myself out through the open window and fell two stories onto the ground. I landed on my side, breaking my arm. In horrible pain, I ran home, crying and yelling to my parents. The police were called and they searched the old building. At first, they didn't find anything. There wasn't even any writing on the walls. They combed the house from top to bottom, but they didn't find any trace of my friend. Then they pried the floorboards up. His body was lying underneath. They never found his head. Do you know how to tell if your house is haunted? If your sheets are missing. <laughs> you should always be a scare going in an abandoned building, kiddos. They could be very dangerous. Ah, the boils and ghouls are here. It's like it's time to go. See you next time, kiddos, for another dread time story. And remember, to stay creepy. <laughs> What are you supposed to be? Ah, Frankenstein, my old friend. Ah, a princess! How about you give me some of your candy, kid? <laughs> <laughs>